The Free National Movement has a new leadership team. We sit down with the Minister of State for Investments. Police have cracked the case of the Governor General's missing chair. The real estate industry responds to the government's promise to lower stamp tax duty. Plus, the National Spelling Bee champ is off to Washington, D.C. I will do my best and enjoy myself because it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I'm Nikia DeVoe and this is NB12 Weekend. For spending your Sunday evening with us. With almost an entirely new slate of party officers, the Free National Movement said it is now ready to bounce back from its crushing loss at the polls on May 7th. New leader Dr. Hubert Minnis last night spoke to the future of the decades-old institution, which is no stranger to opposition. Here's Juan McCartney. Nikia, everyone we spoke to at the convention last night said this new leadership team was chosen specifically to revamp the Free National Movement in the wake of what many have considered a sobering and crushing defeat. In fact, it's a defeat which Dr. Minnis says has only strengthened the Free National Movement's resolve to serve the Bahamian people. Addressing the hundreds of voting delegates and FNM supporters at Holy Trinity Activity Center in Stapleton Gardens, Dr. Minnis indicated that the party is still analyzing why it lost, but is also focused on what's next for the FNM. Our task are to renew our party, revitalize our plans, rebuild confidence, and return as the next government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. <laughs> The Free National Movement will rise from this defeat like a phoenix, emerging with greater strength, wisdom, and fortitude. Our torch will never be extinguished. Dr. Minnis also reminded that the Progressive Liberal Party won the election with less than 50% of votes cast. He pledged that in view of that, the FNM will not only be an effective opposition, but will also function as a government in waiting to rescue the country from what he called the disaster already emerging from the Christie administration. It is not just the victimization that has started again. Even worse, they're already running away fast from their campaign promises. They were not ready on day one. And after 100 days, they will prove that they were never ready for the next five years. Dr. Minnis also talked about the work done by the FNM over the past five years, claiming that the PLP will attempt to take credit for the plans the party put in place for the country. But he said the FNM will remind Bahamians what the Ingram administration was responsible for, despite being rejected at the polls. We could have communicated earlier and better the good work we were doing. Perhaps we could have in some ways spoken more directly to the hearts of our people. And we must be honest about our mistakes and be open to constructive criticisms. However, our extraordinary record shows that we are the party of competence and heart. Our opponents are the party of incompetence and pretending to care while falling to failing to deliver in real terms for the people they pretend to care about. And of course, Nakia, as the FNM prepares to go into the budget debate within the coming days, it also has other concerns, such as the pending by-election in North Abaco, as well as pulling itself out of the proverbial sea of red ink it's racked up over the course of this last general election. Former Prime Minister and FNM leader Hubert Ingram revealed that the party is now about a million dollars in debt. Reporting for NB12, I'm Juan McCartney. 
Thanks, Juan. Well, the FNM's new deputy leader, Long Island MP Loretta Butler-Turner, and its new party chairman, former Golden Isles MP Charles Maynard, also spoke to convention delegates and the nation last night, pledging a new FNM that will win back those who have abandoned the party over the past five years. Butler Turner said the party has long been one that comes back in the wake of disappointment, and this most recent loss will serve to make sure that the FNM is renewed and rebuilt. Let us strengthen the organs of our party. Let us boost the involvement of our national party officers, and let us boost this party's membership. Let us work together to enhance the public's knowledge of the history and the traditions of the FNM and to celebrate that history and honor the contributions of FNM's past and present. We must work together, FNM's, in our outreach to FNM's and Bahamians throughout New Providence, throughout Grand Bahama, and the family islands. Our very name speaks to our great mission. We are a free national movement. Ours is a movement for freedom, equality, and progress. Maynard said the party received the message of the electorate loud and clear and it will become a well-oiled machine in anticipation of reclaiming the government. To that effect, Maynard said the FNM will serve the Bahamian people relentlessly. The FNM is not an election time party, but an everyday party. We are and we must be because we will be the next government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. We are strong. Alive and well. And you will see that. You will see that because we will be in your neighborhoods. We will be at your doorsteps, eager, ready, and willing to listen and to work to rebuild. Most importantly, though, we want you to know that there's a place for you. Every FNM. You will see an FNM where every major organ, every association, every instrument of this party will have a role to play and everyone a chance to participate. Well, the special chair in which the Governor General delivered the speech from the throne Wednesday has been found. According to Superintendent Stephen Dean, police recently located the special chair but said he could not reveal where it was found or who was in possession of it. Dean said police are trying to determine whether they're dealing with a criminal matter. He said it's too soon to say whether the chair was actually stolen or if it was a matter of miscommunication. The chair with sentimental historical value went missing from the House of Assembly after Wednesday's formalities. Dean said the chair was placed in the House to protect it from the rain and sometime Wednesday afternoon a man pulled up a vehicle, went into the House of Assembly and said he had come for the chair and the table. The chair was donated to the people of the Bahamas decades ago by Prince Philip and has been used by Governors General for special functions at Government House, as well as the ceremonial speech from the throne in Rosson Square. Well, Pinewood MP Kalis Rowe was recently sworn in as Minister of State for Investments in the office of the Prime Minister. We sat down with Rowe, who explained the importance of the ministry and the plans to promote local and foreign investment in an effort to turn the country's economy around. My ministry consists of the um, promotion, facilitation, and administrative processing of investments, um, the National Economic Council, um, the Bahamas Investment Authority, Hotels Encouragement Act, um, lands and surveys, um, and acquisition of land. Roll says during the past two weeks he has met with staff and assessed the current state of affairs in his ministry and the various departments to determine what the challenges and opportunities are. He said they have already developed a plan for the ministry. According to Roll, there is a lot of pressure on the government to produce local and foreign investment that is going to move the underperforming economy in the right direction, particularly in light of the high level of unemployment. We started working from day one. Um, we have been meeting with investors that um, have projects that are currently um, under development, um, Bahama, um, Kersner, um, 
and some of the um, non-tourist uh, related projects. Um, there was a project in Abaco, a farming project. Um, we've met with those investors, um, Bimini, um, Eleuthera. Uh, we're trying to fully understand where those projects are and what we can do to encourage um, um, a faster pace of development. Um, there are a number of projects that are in the pipeline now that has been stalled for, for quite a bit. Um, we've been talking with those developers and investors to determine um, what path to um, start. The Ingram administration was heavily criticized by the Progressive Liberal Party for failing to attract significant foreign investments. Roll claims the former government did the country a disservice by doing very little investment promotion. The Christie administration will be more aggressive, he says. The investment um, budget for the Bahamas Investment Authority went largely unspent, from, particularly from the promotion side. Um, there was a philosophy, I understand, of, you know, it's a recession and investors are not going to invest. And I think it's quite the contrary. Um, during a difficult period, um, money doesn't disappear. Uh, people are a bit more cautious, but with the right package of incentives and the right discussions, you will get people to invest.